What's up, y'all? We're gonna start this one off with some corrections. First off, I was informed by Godot YouTuber Bitbrain that you can now use custom resource exports. So in our building data class, we're gonna change the recipes variable type from an array of any resource type to an array specifically of recipe data. Shout out to Bitbrain for that. Here's a link to his channel. Next up, our file system is starting to get ugly, so I'm gonna clean it up. This is personal preference, but here's a screenshot of how I'm setting mine up anyway. One more thing we're going to do is put our grid debug under its own node so that it doesn't get in the way of the rest of our grid. For this, just add a child node under grid named debug, and in our grid.gd script, add the debug nodes as children of this rather than the grid. In this one, we're going to be starting on our units. This is going to be the first of a couple of videos just getting them working, which will involve pathfinding, random name generation, AI, and eventually tasks and task prioritization. I know we haven't quite gotten to the fun parts yet, but don't worry, we're getting there. First thing we'll do is create our actual unit node. We're going to make them an area 2D so that we'll be able to click on them to select them, and also because we don't really need them to interact with Godot's physics system at all. Give it a sprite and a collision shape, and just set the size of the sprite and collision box to the shape of a tile, which is 128 by 128 in this case. And then give it a script. We'll be separating our units into two different scripts. One will be the script for the physical unit in the game world, which is going to handle things like the pawn's position, their current path, the logic for moving around in the game world, and things like that. The other will handle their data, which will be things like their skills, their task priorities, their health and needs, and things like that. If you haven't noticed, I just like to keep the data separate for organization. First we'll make the unit data. This will inherit from object rather than node or resource because it's just going to be used to store variables. For now, this will literally just have name and speed, but we can easily expand it in the future. After that, we'll give a script to our actual unit node. We need to add some references to the main and the grid node so that we can use those. And these need to be set as on ready so that we can get the references as soon as the tree's active. We'll also set a reference to our unit data. Next up, we're going to need to make a variable for the path that our unit's going to follow when it's pathfinding. And we also want to keep track of what grid square that we are currently on. I just added a simple get set here just in case we want to add more functionality later. One thing to note is that the path is actually going to be in grid positions rather than in pixel positions. Here's where we'll be adding the actual functionality for moving along our path. The unit won't be able to find actual paths until we add in A star pathfinding next episode, but we can still debug this without that. We'll create a move function that is called in the process function. What this function is doing is first checking to see if there's a path, and then checking to see if we're currently at the next point in the path. Rather than checking if we're exactly at the spot, we have to check if we're roughly there within a certain amount of pixels. This is because sometimes we might accidentally skip over the spot and keep going infinitely in one direction. Anyway, if we're at the spot, we want to snap ourselves to that grid space, set our grid position variable to that space, and then remove the waypoint from the path. If we're not there yet, we simply move in the direction of the next waypoint times our current speed and delta. Like I said earlier, we can't actually make a path using pathfinding right now, but we can manually set a path just so we can debug this. Under grid, add another child node for the units, and then we just want to add a unit as a child of units. And don't change its position, just leave it at 0, 0. Side note, just realized that since we didn't actually link our unit data quite yet, um, we can't actually use the data yet, so what we're going to do is just add a speed variable, set it to 100, and just use that for now, just for debug. And now if we hit play, we should see that it moves along the path. And that's going to be it for this video. Next up, we'll be adding in A-star pathfinding. Peace.